Seven months ago, we lost our best friend, Babu. A French bulldog with the most amazing personality. He was the most loving and caring dog that you will ever, ever meet. Wherever we went, everybody just wanted to take a photo with him. And um, he was just the best dog in the world. Unfortunately, Babu died because he didn't have enough oxygen because he had severe seizures and the doctors couldn't do anything else for him so we had to put him out. It was the most difficult decision I had to make in years. You see when we got Babu I think at eight months he started having seizures, severe seizures, sometimes four, five, six times a day and Medically, we couldn't do anything more. We gave him all of the medication and um, we took him to every possible doctor to help him, but nothing worked. I can still remember the last words I spoke to Babu when I looked into his eyes. When the doctor said, John, it's time. We can't do anything more for him. I looked him in the eye and I said, Babu, my son, I'll see you again because for me, he was, wasn't just a dog. He was family. He was my boy. As you can see uh, behind me, I made a portrait of him. And now Babu is with us every day. It's still difficult to look at the picture because if you lost someone, especially a pet, you know the feeling. Some people might say, well, it's, it's just a pet. Well, you know it's not a pet. It's family. After his passing, I had very intense conversations with God. To be honest, most of them were about why and how come he didn't heal him. As time passed, all I wanted to know from God is, are we going to see Babu again? Is Babu in heaven? So I went to the scriptures to see if there is any proof that animals will be in heaven. And what I found will shock you. There are some topics that the scripture does not directly address like will your pets be waiting for you in heaven or I'm going to see my pet again. But what we can see in the scriptures is God's heart towards animals and the love he has for all beings and creatures. First, let's look at two examples where we can see God's love for animals. We can see it in the story of Noah and the story of Jonah. In Noah's story, God decided to destroy the world with a flood. However, he found one man named Noah who along with his family was righteous before God. And God decided to save Noah and his family and at least one pair of each kind of animal. We read this in Genesis 7 verse 15. Pairs of all creatures that have the breath of life in them came to Noah and entered the ark. Now the question I had for a long time, and I know many other people still have, the same question is, why did God save the animals from the flood? He is God. Why couldn't he just create more animals after the flood? We hear it every day. Nothing is impossible or Nothing is hard for God, so why did He save the animals? 
What helped me understand why God saved the animals from the flood was what I found in the scripture we just read in Genesis 7 verse 15. Pairs of all creatures that have the breath of love. The key word here is the breath of love. The first time we see this term, the breath of love in scripture is in Genesis 2 where God breathed into the nostrils of man and he became a living being in Genesis 2 verse 7. Then the Lord God formed man of dust from the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of love and man became a living being. God created man and breathed love into his nostrils, the breath of love. Now, did God create the animals first or Adam? Some people has to go and Google this question. He created the animals before breathing love into Adam and then into Eve. Have you ever thought of the fact that God breathed love into animals before man? Ever wondered how the earth looks like without animals? Well, you can't. That's what makes this planet unique from all the other planets. God knew that the animals should have been there before man or woman, and that people need animals just like animals need people. What's important to God is relationship, community, and connection between man and animals. In the Bible, naming was a sacred act. The first work God gave Adam was to name the animals. He gave him an introduction to connect. So, the first point I'm trying to make is that God loves us so much that He created animals for connection, to make our lives more full and fun and enjoyable. Just for a moment, think about your life without having your favorite pet. If we look at the book of Jonah, we see an example of God's love for animals in the end of the book, and it ends with God's concern for the animals in Nineveh. Jonah 4 verse 10 to 11. Then the Lord said, You feel sorry about the plant, though you did nothing to put it there. It came quickly and died quickly. But Nineveh has more than 120,000 people living in spiritual darkness, not to mention all the animals. Shouldn't I feel sorry for such a great city? Jonah was mad at God because God chose not to kill everyone. God spared them all, including all of the animals in Nineveh. If God can take such great measures to save animals so that just one day they could die and perish for all time, it would be odd. I think God has a plan for them in the afterlife, just as He has a plan for us. If God the Creator made a world that included dogs and cats and house pets and all the other weird and wonderful creatures, do you think that in heaven God wouldn't have any creatures like that at all? God placed animals on the earth not just for our enjoyment, but for His also. He loves all of His creation. He is a good God who creates good things. But here comes the twist. It is man who makes choices that hurt people, not animals. They only live according to their instinct. So why would God punish the animals for man's behavior? Look at the next scripture showing us that we go to the exact same place as the animals when we die. Well, our bodies, I mean. Ecclesiastes 3 verse 19 to 20. For what happens to the children of man and what happens to the beasts is the same. 
As one dies, so dies the other. They all have the same spirit, and man has no advantage over the beasts, for all is vanity, all go to one place, all are from the dust, and to dust all return. Do you see that part that said, they all have the same spirit, and man has no advantage over the beasts? God made animals and humans with the same spirit. And yes, I know there is a big difference between a person and an animal because God made men and women in his own image. The point I'm trying to make is this, the same breath of love that flows through our lungs also flows through animals because God designed it so. So, if God created animals for us to love, to love them, to care for them, and He created them for His own enjoyment, the question still remains, will my pet be in heaven? I want to share some scriptures with you that confirms that there are animals in heaven. And if there is animals in heaven, maybe we will see our own pets in heaven one day. Isaiah 11 verse 6 to 9. In that day, the wolf and the lamb will live together. The leopard will lie down with the baby goat. The calf and the yearling will be safe with the lion and a little child will lead them all. The cow will gaze near the bear. The cup and the calf will lie down together. The lion will eat hay like a cow. The baby will play safely near the hole of a cobra. Yes, a little child will put its hand in a nest of deadly snakes without harm. Nothing will hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain, for as the waters fill the sea, so the earth will be filled with people who know the Lord. John, this scripture is referring to us as animals. The writer is using a metaphor to describe types of people we will see one day living together in peace with each other, like we read the wolf and the lamb. It does look like the writer is referring to us as animals, yes. The wolf can be someone who previously had, was a bad person and now lived together with someone who was as innocent as a lamb. But we also see that a little child will be among snakes and she will not be hurt. If people were only referred as animals in this passage, why did the writer say that there will be a little girl among animals? It makes no sense. But if we read it as literal, then it makes sense and it takes us back to the original world God had in store for us. Isaiah 11 verse 6 to 9 is such a beautiful scripture which takes us back to Eden where man and animals of all kinds walked alongside each other. Look at what Jesus said in Luke 12 verse 6. Are not five sparrows sold for two pennies and not one of them is forgotten before God. None of the sparrows is forgotten before God. God will not forget the animals. Did you know that there are scriptures in Revelation that talks about horses in heaven? See what Revelation 19 verse 11 and 14 says. Then I saw heaven opened and a white horse was standing there. Its rider was named Faithful and True, for he judges fairly and wages a righteous war. The armies of heaven, dressed in the finest of pure white linen, followed him on white horses. Horses in heaven, yes, we will find horses in heaven. We read that Jesus rides a horse and is followed by the armies of heaven on white horses. 
In Hebrews 9 verse 23, the Apostle Paul stated that there are things on earth that are patterns of the things in heaven. Perhaps this is the case with other animals. Ezekiel and John saw creatures that had faces of eagles, oxes, calves and lions. Now, eagles, oxen, calves and lions are animals that we have on earth. Therefore, there is no reason why there could not be pet animals on the new earth. Now, there's clearly evidence in the Bible of animals in heaven. Now, if I'm going to see my French bulldog Babu again, and you may be your pets that you lost, nobody knows the answer to that question. All I know is God is God and He can create out of nothing. And He knows it's my heart's desire to see my little boy Babu again. So I believe, and, and the scripture makes it clear, we should pray and we should tell God what is our heart's desire and bring it to Him and in prayer and he will give it to us now whether i'm going to give it get it today or maybe sometime in the future that only god can tell me but i believe in a god that can restore my dog what about you do you believe in life after death do you believe that god can restore your lost pet please let me know in the comment section and if this is your first time please consider to subscribe and like this video this will really help the algorithm so that more people can see this video and uh, thanks so much for supporting this channel at the end of this video i'm going to list uh, a few questions that you can just answer by yourself or uh, with your family or a cell group that you maybe have or a life group and um, please just share this video so that more people can be encouraged with the fact that maybe one day we can see our loved ones, our pets again in heaven. Hope you have a great day. See you in the next video.